the countdown continues. We are just 23 days away from the presidential election, 23 days away from SHTF, guys. And we're all talking the air, and you can be rest assured that there's going to be utter chaos no matter who wins this election. Our country has never been more divided than what it has been right now and what it is right now. Because if you look back at the history books, we are more divided now than what we were back when the Civil War actually kicked off. So we are overdue for an event to happen, a catastrophic event, whether it be World War III and we get invaded because we're so divided, or it's Civil War 2.0 or things along those lines. It's going to be utter chaos no matter what happens. And it could be all these events coming at the same time. Also, with the United States dollar getting weaker and weaker, that's going to be something that really plays into what we're doing as well. With the dollar losing value by the day and more and more countries ditching it, our dollar is going to bottom out soon enough. In fact, it'll probably bottom out by the end of next year if we're even still worried about money at that point. I'm not worried about money. And honestly, guys, you should not be either. I mean, I'm not saying don't go out and work. I'm not saying, oh, don't go out and try to do it to keep your lights and stuff on right now. I'm just saying don't spend all of your time at work to where that's all you're doing. Spend some extra time. Go to the range. Go to the gym. Get out there. Do some extra things. You know, practice, you know, digging a foxhole. Practice doing things because these are skill sets that are going to be needed in the future guys this country and the world in general is just utterly chaotic right now and be pretty sure whatever happens here will affect what happens all over the rest of the world and a lot of people are disillusioned by this I, in fact i've seen comments and stuff online and everything people saying the united states will never fall and the dollar's never been stronger than what it is right now both of those are so ludicrous to even say because the United States dollar has never been weaker than what it has right now. It's just going to continue to fall off. To explain it to you guys in simple terms, the dollar, our debt is bought by other countries. That's the reason that the dollar can sustain because other countries use the U.S. dollar and they buy it as debt and they use our dollars. So that keeps the currency halfway strong. Well, as more and more countries start ditching the U.S. dollar and China and Russia's new currency starts becoming more and more powerful, and people are going to be on China and Russia's side, guys, because the United States is a shell of what it formerly once was at our current time and space. Now, that might sound like it's, you know, it sounds ridiculous to some of you out there thinking that, Oh, it's not any different than what it has been over in the past and everything. Well, it is. You're just not paying attention to what's going on around you. And pay attention to actual reports. Everybody always says, oh, don't don't, don't like watching the news because it's, it's so negative. Knowing what's actually going on will actually sound even more negative than what it actually is. And a lot of people say, oh, I don't want to hear all that negativity. It's not negativity, guys. It's realist. I mean, people have been trained... To where they think that being real is being negative and having a negative attitude about everything. This is the time that, that we live in. And if Civil War 2.0 does kick off, it won't be as good as the first one. I know that sounds weird saying that, but it will not go as smoothly as the first one did. Even though, yeah, there was people, you know, getting killed and perishing on, on sides there and everything but the battle lines were drawn nobody was fighting except for in these certain areas and the battle lines the south state over here the north state over here they met in neutral battlefields this time it will be a free-for-all and i keep hearing oh it'll be republican against democrat or it'll be this and that it won't be that cut and dry it's going to be everybody because when people can't get food the people can't be self-sufficient. Back in the day, they could go out, hunt their own food. They could go out and grow their own food so easily. People can't do that anymore because they have become too coddled in modern society. So you've got to understand this, that if you're somebody that has supplies, 
somebody, if they know that you have them, they're going to be coming for them at some point. Because once they get to starving, actually starving, not this crap that you hear now where people are like, oh, I haven't eaten in, you know, I haven't eaten in the last, like, five hours. I'm starving. No. If you've eaten in the last, you know, three or four weeks, you are just now starting to starve. You can go weeks without food. Yes, you will get weak and you will get kind of belt nursed in some aspects of things. But there's people that fast for a long time and they're perfectly all right after fasting for weeks on end and everything. So that's not a big deal. Water is the big thing that you need. Yes, you do need to sustain some kind of food. But if you think you're starving now, wait for the days ahead. And wait till you're having to ration it and you're not able to eat three times a day. You'll be lucky if you can really justify even using your supplies to eat two times a day. And this is the reality a lot of people don't think about because you're not going to have enough food. You have to understand that when people say, well, this stuff is good for like, this is a six month food supply. It's usually about half of what they say it is or less. So if it's a six month food supply that you bought in Sam's Club that it's only good for about three months, and that's really only for you. If you have multiple people, that ain't even going to last that long. I mean, if you have a six-month food supply, but you have ten people, your six-month food supply is useless pretty much at that point. I mean, it turns into just, you know, a multi-day food supply, or, you know, you might be able to stretch it out for like a week, but it gets that bad over time. That's why you have to be able to ration your supplies and ration your food. Also, be prepared to do without power. We are lucky because we're coming into the winter time now. So, now with winter coming on and everything, you, you have to worry about heat instead of being inside and being, you know, dying of a heat stroke. You're actually inside and you're worried about, you know, getting hypothermia and everything. So, if you are on electric heat, you really need to be thinking about how are you going to provide some heat. If you're on propane and stuff, you'll be all right. But you also got to think about that gas supply that you have of your propane or if you're on natural gas. If the lines ever get cut or eventually it's going to run out because you're not going to have people around to maintain all that stuff. Things to think about as we're coming into the winter time right now, though, guys. And there's a lot more going on in the world like I spoke on like yesterday Sh Chicago has trains getting <laughs> booted up there there's reports of bad actors that are starting to stage for the presidential election since that's what we're talking about right now you know they are starting to stage everything for the presidential elections to cause mass chaos everywhere so that way and make no mistake, though, guys, these other countries, they they want America to fall because we're the only thing that stands in the way of, you know, China getting its world dominance. We're the only thing that stands in the way of, you know, other countries being able to do whatever they want to do because who always gets involved? The United States does. So understand that the times that we are living in is going to be the most chaotic in history. It'll be unlike anything that you've ever seen. And it's unfortunate because this is the weakest generation in history right now. And that's a very unfortunate fact because the times will be harder than ever before, but the people are weaker than ever before because of how, you know, how easy they've had it up to this point, how caught up they've been with society and everything. So... Guys, as we get into these days ahead, you've got to be ready. And I recommend if you're going to buy that that ready-to-eat food supply that's good for, you know, it says it's good for like 25 years. If it says, you know, three months, six months, whatever, pick up, you know, if you can, pick up, you know, five or six of them anyway. So that way you have at least a halfway decent food stock. Also understand that a lot of that stuff is not going to last as long as it says it does. Yes, it's stable, but it's not as stable as it could be. Also, where you're storing that stuff is going to be the ideal place. Now, make sure that it's stored in a dry environment. I shouldn't have to say that, but I am because it's just something that a lot of people just don't understand. 
they just want to take their stuff and throw it everywhere. You have no idea how many people I've seen that just take their stuff and just pile it up and throw it in random places to where moisture can get into it. I mean, obviously, if you're storing it in a basement stuff, though, and, you know, places to where it isn't going to get broken, cracked, fractured, especially those plastic buckets. I mean, and if you're not canning by now, you really need to learn how to can your own stuff, and you, you just need to learn. Basic things, though, guys, and if you have, have your own chickens, if nobody's told you yet, then take the eggs. Don't wash them because that coat actually helps protect them on there whenever they come out of the chicken. So that way you can store them easier. If you're going to pick them in a jar or whatever, it's still better because then they tend to last way longer that way. Just be prepared though, guys, because the days ahead, as I've said before, the days ahead are not going to be pretty. We are 23 days away from presidential election, and all the reports are saying that they're expecting something big to happen before we ever get to this presidential election. And all the reports are out there that, you know, may not happen before, but it probably most likely will happen afterwards and you have got to be ready for this don't be caught with your pants down like what you wore whenever the port strike started because i knew that they were going to make a run on supplies in the store but i did not expect them to make a run on toilet paper again so and buy things that you actually need i will say this again as well buy things that you actually need to use toilet paper paper products not really something that you really need to prioritize yeah they're nice to have but they're not really something that you, you need to prioritize and that stuff is is made here in america so if we have a, have another strike like that if that's the first thing that happens don't worry about the toilet paper situation so much of course the people that went out and panic bought now they've got enough to do them for a year or two so now they don't have to worry about anybody else you know, they don't have to worry about going back and getting everything. But people remember back during 2020, whenever people people better run on that stuff, and then they went and they better run on it again. And I have a theory on that. The reason they did that is so they could go and they could try to resell it, but then the strike didn't last any time because then you had all these people running and trying to return all of it to the stores and everything, which I hope they didn't like let them return it because it's just ridiculous. Also, another item that they didn't really talk about was bottled water. It was one of the first things to disappear. Make sure that you're staying stocked up on that as much as you can. And if you guys have not seen the movie Prepper, go out and watch it. Because it's a neat little concept. Like movie, it's not exactly the most realistic thing in the world. Because these people were going out and the guy's supposed to be a school teacher and the movie and he goes out and he you know they start getting prepared and it's it's set back years ago and I don't mean like in the old times I mean like it's set back like when the Ebola virus and stuff was a big deal and people getting prepared and then you know everybody didn't like really want to listen to him but then he convinces them to go ahead and go to the store and prepare and then when they do the the Ebola virus is starting to spread all over the country and so they're on lockdown people are coming to try to loot his neighbor's house and take stuff from them and they go out there and they bond together as a community as a neighborhood and they deal with what they have to deal with and everything out there some parts of it are good some parts of it aren't but it's more realistic than any Hollywood movie that you'll find out there independently produced I believe which is good from a more realistic perspective than what Hollywood seems to put in there and everything. Stuff like that. Everybody is always asking what movies you should watch to really prepare. And honestly, there isn't really one out there for it. If you're thinking about an invasion, if that's what you're thinking about, Red Dawn and stuff is not a good one at all. I mean, there's a few parts in it that kind of, kind of show you some things like they get all the supplies and stuff at the store, which is good. And then the two boys, Patrick Swayze and Charlie Sheen's characters, are supposed to know their way around and supposed to be able to really navigate their way out in the woods because their dad they used to take them hunting and stuff up there, and they used to be able to, and they were used to doing that type of stuff. But that's why it's important to be prepared. If there's one thing that movie 
shows you it's important to have a skill set because a skill set like for them is something that nobody can take away from them at the end of the day. They could lose all their supplies and they could lose everything but as long as they had a way to get a deer and they had a way to clean it and everything and butcher it that's all they that's all they needed in order to survive up there in those mountains and that's something that you really should fuck at that movie as being the realistic part of it is that having the skill sets is definitely like where it's at you could lose your supplies but you cannot lose your skill sets and teach other people if you are really good at something Teach other people so they can start to learn. Because then if something happens to you, at least they have it and you've increased their odds of survival. And it's always good to have two or three people that are good at the same thing. And it's good to have multiple skill sets as well for yourself. But you're not going to ever be good at everything. And that's something to remember in the days ahead as well. You're never going to be good enough at everything to really be able to survive on your own. And that is a, another thing that I wish people would get out of the idea of is this whole... Rambo thing of where they go out and they think that they're going to go out and just be like Mr. Badass and go out there and start taking on everybody and their brother and you see people all the time especially among preppers kind of the loony bin ones because there are those out there and everything that say well I've got a firearm so uh, that's all I need because I'll just go take whatever I want and that's not the way to be guys that is not the way to be at all you've got to have your own supplies because you may think that you're untouchable because that is the mindset of this current generation but I can guarantee you that you're not because when somebody punches you in the mouth that'll be the wake up call but by then it's too late because you haven't prepared to be punched in the mouth so Make sure that you are prepared. Make sure that you check out some things, though, guys. Um, obviously, I'll leave you guys with a small list. Everybody wants to make a run on the bread and the milk and stuff. Well, you got to be thinking about, well, if there's no power, that stuff is going to spoil pretty quickly. Bread goes bad so quickly and stuff, though. Not really something that you need. And uh, you just got to get what you think you actually need but long self shelf life I mean if you want to pick up a loaf of bread like in the day of chaos then by all means go ahead and do it but it's not going to really do you much good it just isn't filling enough and it doesn't have enough calories to really do anything and you don't want to sit there and eat a lot of bread anyway because that stuff is really bad for you in fact you can cut bread out all together that would be great if you cut out a lot of starchy foods all together, that would be great because you're not going to have doctors around in the days ahead. So you're going to have to be able to really take care of your health. A lot of people haven't taken care of themselves good enough now. And I feel like a lot of people think they're in way better shape than what they actually are. Well, whenever you get out there and you actually have to start carrying a bug out bag, you have to actually start busting all this firewood and carrying it back to your base camp and everything. That's when you're going to realize what kind of shape that you're actually in. And that's why it's good to get in shape now. Now, some people can't. Some people have medical issues. Some people, you know, they have issues to where they can't, you know, go to the gym and work out. And that's perfectly all right. But you're going to have to be, for the majority of people, you're going to have to be in at least somewhat decent shape in order to be able to be really be useful. Now, you will get into shape as you go through the days ahead because you're going to have to be doing so much physical labor and you know gas won't be available so you won't be able to use all, all of your machines and everything so these are just food for thought guys make sure that you are staying prepared make sure that you're staying informed those are your biggest things that you need to be doing right now staying informed and making sure that you know what is actually going on because nobody's going to ring a bell and say, ding, 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 this is it, the balloon's gone up, oh, it's time for doomsday to start, da, 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 you have got to be ready on your own, and you're going to have to make that own decision on your own, you're going to have to decide, it's getting too dangerous here, it's time to move out, it's time to go bug out, bugging out should not be your first option, though, bugging in should be, you've got to be ready to be able to move as well, though, you've got to be able to 
bit better ready to move quickly. And this could be problematic for people who have elderly people in their group or things along those lines. But you will probably see people run out to the woods. This is the thing that you always hear people say, oh, I'm going out to the woods, I'm going out to the woods. Well, then they get out to the woods and everybody else is out there. Then they hunt all the game to extinction. Then there isn't enough food to go around, so then they start getting aggravated at each other. And then that's why most people won't last past the first 90 days of a major collapse like what we're in store for, guys, and something that we as a country have never actually experienced before. But every great empire falls at 245 years on average, and we are coming into 245 here very, very soon. So the history books, they always repeat themselves. It may not be the exact same way, but the exact same things cause it, and that's where we are at right now. We are at the door and you know they said the doomsday clock is really close to midnight well it has never been closer to midnight than what it is right now because of all the talks talk of nuclear war and Russia threatened like nuclear war which that seems to be their biggest go-to card right now is they continue to threaten NATO if NATO gets involved in Ukraine but we are on a head-on collision course for that so nukes could be used and your survival plan is going to have to be upped if you make it through that and if you intend to make it through that because it is going to be utter chaos when that happens if you live out in the country you're probably safe as long as they don't decide to launch a lot of them at the same time we do have a defense system but it's effective 100% of the time, but that was only testing it against one at a time. We do not know what it will do. If you look at like the Iron Curtain, which is one of the best defense systems that like Israel has, it's only effective about 90% of the time. Well, you figure if Russia launches 100, 100 nukes on us, that means 10 of them will make it through if we have a 90% effective rate. So that's the kind of thing that you have to be prepared for. And you also have to be prepared for the chaos that will ensue after that. And contrary to what you believe and what you've been told, nukes being launched is not the end of the world. Unless if everybody and their brother decides to launch them all at once, then yeah, the world is done. But you've got to be ready for the scenario of a couple of them are fired. We fire a couple devastation so big they call it a truce and then we start to rebuild from the ground up again that scenario is one of the most likely scenarios to actually happen so guys stay informed stay prepared and get prepared if you're not already prepared god bless each and every one of you and we'll catch you in the next one guys Subscribe and turn on that notification bell so you don't miss any of our weekly uploads. Thank you for watching GNR Exploration and Discovery.